What's up, V2 crew? This is Unknown here, and we got another episode in the series, Trophy and Achievement Systems, the good, the bad, and the cringe. And today's topic, we're going to be talking about the sale and causing the buying of lesser quality games, we're going to call it. I'm not going to try to be super negative here and call them terrible games. I mean, well, that's, it's, uh, it's subjective, but let's get into things here first off as we know there are a lot of games that have nowadays very very quick achievement and trophy lists and this is going to cause if you're trying to play for these cheap these short lists yeah they're short yeah they might be five dollars but if you pay five dollars for a five minute game you're basically paying a dollar a minute as opposed to paying even full price $60, $70 for a hundred plus hour game. Let's go to the far other end of the spectrum there or a thousand hour game. That's a significant difference there. That's like 30, 40, 50% difference. And yeah, it just definitely adds up. There is that. There's also the fact that you can buy the same game multiple times to get all the stacks. It's kind of like we're selling you the same exact game. Nothing's different. Yeah, there's a different trophy list. But... It's literally the exact same game. And you bought it. So... Yeah... I mean, if there was no trophy list, even if you really enjoyed it, you could just play the same one you bought already. And also, too, going along with that, um, the same game, there's a lot of games that have region and system stacks. So let's talk about the system stacks for a second. Now, say you're playing the game on, let's say just go with PS4. I was going to use a PS5 example, but I think there's more so um, cross-gen at the moment for that. So we'll just say PS4, and it is not cross-buy. Now, you play the PS4 version, and you get all the stuff. And then you decide to play the game again on the PS3, because there's a different list, or the Vita, and it just doesn't work good. Like the port was terrible to Vita or something. So you're buying not only the same game, but you're buying a game that is purely less quality to play because it just flat out is laggy as heck. I mean, even if it's a good game, you're still playing the lower quality version of that same game when you own the system and the game itself on the higher quality system. Playing it in just better resolution, better frame rate, all that. There's that aspect as well. Now, there's also the aspect of different region stacks for games. So you would play, and this isn't so much on Xbox, but on PlayStation, there's a lot of games that have region stacks. Again, it's the same exact game, but the purchasing of the region stacks is going to cost you more. Because you can't use your native credit card uh, in the other stores, typically. Actually, I don't know if you ever can, because you have to... Well, you'd have to get a credit card from the other country, uh, which would be incredibly hard to do, because you'd have to send bank account statements and social security numbers and all that. Uh, so you'd have to go the route of purchasing game cards. The thing with purchasing game cards is, yeah, sometimes you can get them, like, kind of on a discount. But it's harder to do for other countries, such as, like, Korea or um, Japan. And then also, too, it adds a certain amount of money to your account. And it's very hard to zero that out and perfectly use all of it. So you're always going to have either this little bit of extra left... Um, worst case or best case scenario, or it's going to almost encourage you to buy another card to buy another game 
because you're like, oh, I got a dollar in here. Let's buy another $5 card and buy another $5.50 game or something that I might not have otherwise bought. So there's that. And then also, too, when you buy cards from other regions, typically you're paying a little bit more than the points are worth anyway. Could be in the form of exchange fees or just in general, they mark it up just kind of a little bit. They might know that you need it, that you can't buy it any other way. So, so yeah, there's that as well. Um, then also, too, it kind of encourages... Like, the purchase of these games kind of encourages the system to keep continuing this route where devs will just slap a really easy trophy list on a really easy kind of game they didn't really spend too much time on just because they know you're going to buy it because of the trophies and achievements being super, super simple. And then also, too, how we talked about the... Um, the dollars per minute kind of uh, discussion for briefly. The fun factor per dollar also going down because if you're playing a game that's not really that enjoyable, even if it's not uh, like a terrible game, maybe you just don't really enjoy it. So your fun factor per dollar just goes down because, well, you're kind of forcing yourself to do a chore that you're paying for. Yeah, that doesn't sound typically too fun. Anyways, I think that's pretty much what I was going to cover in this episode. I'm sure I left things out. Sorry that this one was, was another kind of negative one. We'll try to think of a more positive subject maybe for next time. But if I left anything out and you guys have any other opinions on the matter please comment down below. You can also join in the Discord discussion. Links will be in the description. Help me think of some more topics to cover, some more sub-bullets for those topics. You can also uh, follow me on Twitch and Twitter. Links in the description as well. Yeah, like, comment, and subscribe if you have not. If you enjoy the series, I appreciate Appreciate all of the support and watching. You guys are awesome. And with that being said, everybody have a good night, good morning, enjoy your games. Thanks for watching. As always, you stay positive, you do you, be your V2. Goodbye, everybody.